Good evening, everyone. Um, recently, I was uh, asked to uh, look into the Diamond Sutra for learning. And um, I wanted to talk to my fellow travelers on the path of enlightenment tonight about that experience I had in learning. Embark on a journey through the profound teachings of the Diamond Sutra was transmitted to us by the revered translator of Red Pine. The Sutra, like a diamond, cuts through the layers of ignorance and delusion, revealing the radiant truth of reality. As Buddhist laymen and Zen masters alike, um, we can explore its wisdom together and glean insights that can guide us on our spiritual journey. The Diamond Sutra, also known as the Vajra Chedya Prajna Paramita, is one of the most revered texts in Mahayana Buddhism. It takes the form of a dialogue between the Buddha and his disciple, Subhuti. And it begins with Subhuti asking the Buddha how a Bodhisattva should give and how they should cultivate their thoughts. The Buddha responds by teaching the doctrine of shunyata, or emptiness, and the importance of transcending dualistic concepts. This is a key teaching of the Diamond Sutra. This notion of emptiness and the understanding that all phenomena lack inherent existence. The Buddha illustrates this concept through various metaphors and examples. For instance, he says, this is called emptiness. And why? Because it is empty of inherent existence. And what is empty of inherent existence is said to be empty. Here the Buddha is pointing to the essential nature of all phenomena as empty of inherent existence. Just as a cloud appears solid and substantial from a distance, but dissolves upon closer inspection, so too are all things devoid of inherent solidity. We could think about it in terms of the absolute relative relationship. Because of emptiness, what we assume to be real is in fact not. But for convenience sake, and since we dwell within the shared realm of samsara, we still refer to it as real so we can collectively function together. It doesn't make unreal more real or vice versa. They're both real and not real concurrently. As Zen master Unsan would say, we see an orange, we eat an orange. The orange has no inherent orangeness to it, but it is still good if you're hungry. And once it's been eaten, its impermanence is evident, but it was still more filling than just a concept. Hence the two truths, conventional truth, the way things appear to be, and ultimate truth, the way things really are, come to light. Understanding the nature of these truths allows us to loosen the grip of attachment and aversion. This leads to freedom from suffering. Furthermore, the Diamond Sutra emphasizes the importance of transcending attachments to views and teachings. And at the Buddha states, if anyone should teach that Tathagata has either a Dharma to teach or a Dharma to learn. Don't accept it. This admonition urges us to go beyond attachment to any fixed doctrines or concepts, including those of the Buddha and Buddhism itself. True insight arises from direct experience rather than clinging to intellectual constructs. The Sutra goes on to underscore the practice of compassion and generosity. The Buddha teaches that the merit accrued from giving is, is immeasurable and leads to boundless blessings. He encourages us to give without attachment, understanding that the ultimate aim of generosity is the alleviation of sufferings for all beings. As he says, Subhuti, what do you think? Can the Tathagata be seen by the means of his bodily signs? No world honored one. Why? because the Tathagata says that bodily signs are no signs. In this exchange, 
the Buddha challenges the Buddha to transcend reliance on external appearances and instead receive the ultimate reality beyond form. This teaches us the importance of seeing beyond superficial attributes and recognizing the true nature of existence. One of the final and crucial teachings I found of the Diamond Sutra is the practice of non-attachment to self. The Buddha declares, all composed things are like a dream, a phantom, a drop of dew, or a flash of lightning. Thus, we shall perceive them. This reminds us of the impermanent and illusory nature of the self and encourages us to go let go of attachment to egoic identities. Again, whether Buddha, layman, or Zen masters, the Diamond Sutra offers profound guidance in our practice and invites us to cultivate mindfulness and insight in our daily lives, to see through the illusions of ego and separation, intact with compassion and generosity towards all beings. The Sutra serves as a guiding light on the spiritual journey, illuminating the path to awakening the wisdom and compassion within us all. May we heed its teachings and embark on the path of liberation with courage and dedication. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the profound wisdom of the Diamond Sutra. May its insights continue to inspire and uplift us on our journey towards enlightenment. Thank you.